Welcome back, this is Yamajack, and today we got Gunslinger, Mario 64 Remastered, Suicide. I think we just played Mario 64 Remastered. I picked Dix, I'm like, oh, this is a map we haven't played in a while. But I'm pretty sure we did just play it, so... My bad. Trying to add some more variety in, because it's been a lot of Ashwood Asylum lately, which... I mean, I'm fine with. I don't really care about the game so much, honestly, but... I, I've been trying to, to get some kind of variety in. You know, variety is the uh, is the spice of life, as they say. I wonder what the spice of death is. You know, variety makes life better. What makes death better? Now, this isn't an edgy thing, okay? This isn't an edgy thing. But let's uh, let's say that there's a you know some kind of let's say there's some kind of afterlife or something like that, right? What's 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 the spice of death? You know, or do you become like some kind of edgy edge meister when you die? Is that is that how it goes down? I don't know, man. Probably human. That's my guess. Uh, that's because I'm going to hell, and that's how I would probably be tortured is just being, you know, bathed in cumin. Can't stand the smell of that stuff, man. I can't stand the smell of it. There's a lot of smells I can't stand the smell of. I got uh, cumin, coriander, star anise. Uh, honestly, like, I'm, I'm not being racist, but, like, pretty much all of the Indian spices, I just don't sit right with me at all. I'm not, you know, I don't know. They, they, I, I, I just, I can't, uh, I can't use it. I have, uh, I have, I have friends who are like, hey, you should try like Indian foods from time to some time. It's, it's like really good. I'm like, uh, I'm sure it's great, but I really just can't. I really can't. It's unfortunate because I, I hear people talking about uh, Indian food all the time, and and how great it is. I'm like, I wish I could enjoy it. I really do. I just, it's. You, you can't make Indian food without, uh, for, well, most Indian food anyway. Like some, I don't know, like naan or something, you know? Some sandwiches and stuff, but, uh, you know, your, your kind of classic Indian dishes, it's, it's going to use a lot of that kind of, um, uh, trying to think of, like, fennel, um, star anise, Cumin, coriander, curry powder, whatever. Um, you know, all, all that kind of stuff is, is, is pretty prominent in, in Indian cuisine. And it's all, it's all just terrible. I can't stand it. Um, so it always kind of sucks. Because my, uh, my mother used uh, brought home, like, some butter chicken once or something like that. My family was all like, wow, this is, like, really good. And I'm just, nah... Nah, makes me feel kind of left out. And it's unfortunate, because it is literally just like... Like, if you look at uh, Indian Spices, pretty much that entire list is all stuff that I just will puke if I eat. Literally. <laughs> it's like... And then pretty much anything else, like any other spice I'm pretty much okay with, you know? Thyme, um... Cinnamon to a certain extent, which I think might have some uses in Indian cuisine. I don't know, um, but cinnamon I don't. I'm not a huge fan of it, but I, I can I can get behind it in some cases. Uh, what's that one? Is it oregano or? No, it's not oregano. It's uh, it's the soapy one. It's parsley and. I can't remember the smoke, the soapy one. I don't have the soapy thing. I I can I can enjoy it. I don't know. Maybe I do have the soapy thing. I just I don't need a lot of soap, so I don't really know. And then I do like the taste of it. So maybe maybe I have the soapy thing. And I just like soapy, you know, herbs. I don't know, but uh, I like it. Is the moral of the story? Um, yeah, I don't know. You just you like name any spice. And I'll probably like it, unless it's one that's typically associated with Indian cuisine. <laughs> Which is like, I don't know why. Because I didn't have any, you know, traumatizing experiences growing up uh, with Indian food. I, I don't, I'm, I'm trying to think of 
uh, what would that even be? I did, uh, growing up I did have uh, a few Indian houses that I went into, but uh, you want to know a secret? They generally tend to smell like houses, not necessarily like Indian cuisine. So, I, I didn't really have any traumatizing experiences there. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't think I had any. I'm trying to think of like what would even be traumatizing with cuisine. I don't know, like being tortured and, and force-fed cuisine of, of various cultures, perhaps could could do it. I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure, but it it is like the entire list of, of classic Indian spices that I'm just not okay with. Fennel's a big one. Fennel's fennel's a big one. I don't know. Fennel's kind of a polarizing. Uh, Thing though, right? Like a lot of people really like it, and a lot of people really don't. And I don't think there are many people who are just like, yeah, I can stand it. No, I, I think I think it's pretty like, maybe maybe it's another soap thing. Maybe there's like a specific gene or something that that decides whether you like fennel. I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't have the gene that makes me like fennel. I have the gene that makes me despise it. If I get this, this the faintest hint of it in the food I'm eating, it's just nope. <laughs> this food is no longer edible. I will rather starve. I'd rather eat it than starve, really. But I don't. Uh, you know, I'm not in a position where I have to make that decision. I'm in a position where I go, "Ew, this has fennel in it. You have it." And then my sister or my father will eat it, and then my mother and I will eat uh, the food that doesn't have it in it. like black licorice right they're not it's not actually what black licorice is made out of but it, it does have a it's like fennel seed has the uh the black licorice taste and then the fennel itself doesn't i think or is it the other way around i don't know but i can't stand it i've never had uh I've, I, I don't know maybe, maybe i have had because i know that fennel seed and then fennel fennel apparently taste different i've definitely had the one that tastes like black licorice I'm not sure if I've had the one that doesn't. I assume it will also taste like black licorice. You know, people, uh, people say stuff like that all the time, you know? Like, oh, it doesn't taste the same. It's, it's so different. It's very different. And then it, it, it's exactly the same. I'm like, yeah, no, you're just lying. It happens with um, flavors all the time, too. It's, uh, it's flavorless. You can add it to your water and you won't taste a thing. No, I, I almost certainly will. Um, people saying that their, you know, weed gummies don't taste like anything. No, I could definitely taste the weed. People, uh... Wait, we, uh, my room flooded a while back, a couple of years ago. So I had to live in the, uh, the living room. And that was until the, the smell of... Because it, it flooded, and then they had to, like, air it out or whatever. They had to, like, pull up all the flooring and air it out and blah, 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 right? Uh, and I uh, couldn't stand the smell was, was really the main thing. So for a while, it was, like, you can't be in here because there's, like, mold and... Um, you know, you, you shouldn't really be sleeping in this, right? Like, you, you just shouldn't be. Uh, because there there was a lot of, of uh, odors and stuff that weren't really good for you. That, uh, that they wanted me out of. So they were like, yeah, you can move back in in like a, a week or whatever. And um, Then they get to put the floors back in after like a month or something and it was it was like a week later and and my parents were were saying uh like hey there's no more smell down there you can move back down you don't have to be up in the living room i mean everybody was inconvenienced by me being in the living room i was inconvenienced by being in the living room because i don't have a bedroom my sister was inconvenienced by me being in the living room because she doesn't have a living room my parents were inconvenienced by it because now they have to be quiet when they're like getting up or whatever you know everybody was put out by by it right so everybody wanted me back in my room <laughs> myself included um and 
So like, hey, you know, there's no more smell down there. You know, we went down there, we checked, like, we can't smell anything. It's, it seems pretty okay. So you're, you should be good to go. I went down and it was like, nah. <laughs> it, it still stinks. Like, I can't be in that room. So it took a good, like, week after everybody else was like, yeah, we can't smell it. Before I could stand being in it. I could still smell it, like, a week later, but it was uh, manageable. But it happens all the time, man. I don't know if it's uh, related to me or just people. I don't know. It's, there's, it's probably something with me, right? Not, not in a unique way, but some kind of thing that I have, autism, perhaps. Um, where just I don't know the 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 meaning I put to words or the way my senses work kind of are different. I don't know. Cause it's it's all the time. People say, oh yeah, this thing isn't like this thing, and I try it, and I'm like, no, it's literally the same thing. I don't know how you could try... Uh, I'm trying to think of a good example. I can't, I can't think of anything off the top of my head that would be relatable to you. Uh, what happens with, like, spices from time to time, they, you know... Oh, okay, okay. I can't stand cinnamon in most cases. I, I said I, I can in some cases. That's mostly cinnamon rolls. And uh, if a restaurant puts cinnamon on it after I say, hey, can you hold the cinnamon? Or if a restaurant puts cinnamon on my French toast after I say, hey, can you hold the cinnamon? Uh, I'll be like, you know, I'll complain about it and be, and I'll say it's not worth like fixing it, but I want to like make you feel bad because you made my breakfast suck. Um, and then I get my money back for the for the French toast. I don't need to make them remake it. I just I'll eat it, but I'm not paying for it. Cause I, either way, if I don't eat it and they toss it, or and, and make me a new one, or if I don't eat it and I don't pay, then either way they're they're at the same cost. I just don't want to bother them. Really, is the thing. But uh, I just I can't. I can't stand cinnamon in most cases, and what'll happen from time to time is my mother will make a recipe that has cinnamon in it, and then she'll put less cinnamon in it, and then be like, yeah, you can't even taste it, and I'll try it, and all I can taste is cinnamon. And I just I just look at her, and I'm like, what do you mean you can't taste the cinnamon? <laughs> what, are you, what world are you living in that the cinnamon isn't there? But perhaps it's me that's living in an alternate world. You know, if everything's wrong everywhere I go, maybe I'm the problem. But, uh, that happens from time to time. I'd, I'd rather, like, honestly, in that kind of a situation, I'd rather they just... And I don't really eat their food anywhere anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But, uh, you know, in that kind of a situation, I'd, I'd rather they just don't make me anything than, like, butcher their meal for me. Because whatever they're making clearly needs the cinnamon to be good, so... If you make it without the cinnamon, I'm not going to enjoy it as much either. Because now it's, you know, overpowered in the salt department or something, right? Like, if you just if you just remove the cinnamon from a recipe, it doesn't taste as good. Because um, it was it was kind of built around that cinnamon as being a, a part of it. And cinnamon is a very strong flavor. Um, so if you remove it, you're, you're kind of taking out a pretty major component of, of a recipe. Uh, so, you know, you kind of want to leave it. So if you're doing that, like, I don't know, just I'll just make my own thing or I'll order food or something. I don't really care. Just enjoy your cinnamon. I don't care. Meatloaf is another one that I just can't stand. We're, I don't know. We're getting into foods I can't stand, I guess. Meatloaf's another one. I used to, um... When my family would cook meatloaf, I would throw up. <laughs> like, literally. I would literally throw up when they, uh... When they made meatloaf. Nowadays, I can I can handle it, but I will I will still be very mad if uh, if they're cooking a meatloaf and didn't warn me ahead of time. I don't know what it is about the meatloaf, but the, just the smell of it just is insanely overpowering to me. And uh, I, I I will I, I used to throw up. I don't anymore, but it's it's still. I'd, ra I'd rather not be anywhere near that. And. Uh, I don't know. I just I don't like meatloaf too. Actually, when I was uh, when I was when I was living in the living room, 
My uh, my mother made a meatloaf actually, and I was like, oh, I'd, I'd never been madder in my life because I didn't have anywhere to go. <laughs> you know, like I didn't have a bedroom to go sit in. I didn't have like I had to just sit there in the living room and uh, suffer for like three hours or something. It's an honest mistake, you know, like, in that kind of a situation, you know, you can't really, I don't know, you, you can get mad, but looking back on it, I'm not, like, upset with her now, I was incredibly upset at the time, um, but, you know, you want to make your meatloaf or whatever, and I'm sleeping in the living room, I mean, it's easy to forget that for a moment, right, stick a meatloaf in the oven, and then my life is, my, my day is ruined, but, uh, I think she ended up like taking it out and airing out the the area and stuff. So it wasn't it wasn't as bad as it could have been, but man, that sucked. Vintage. I ended up uh, putting like blankets on top of me and just remaining inside the blankets to, to hopefully block out as much of the scent as I could. I think I had like uh, some kind of deodorant or something like that that I was uh sniffing <laughs> it was it was like a few hours of just torture because my mother decided to cook a, a meatloaf while I had to be near it it was it was it was one of the the worst experiences I've had um that wasn't like mentally like like a physical thing you know, like like a physical sensation that's that's overwhelming me. That's that's probably one of the worst. I've had I've had worse experiences just in general. Like I'd rather do that than, than some of the other stuff I've had to go through. But it was uh, from from a purely physical standpoint. I, I haven't done much that I would that I would uh, you know not rather do than than go through sitting next to a meatloaf being cooked in the oven for three hours. <laughs> I don't know why, uh, but it, it just, it's, uh, I mean, I know why. It's, it's the autism, but, you know, that's that's just kind of the way that life goes when you're autistic. So I tell you, if I ever have you over for, for, uh, for a meal, and I'm cooking a meatloaf, it's probably, it's probably not a real meatloaf. I'm probably tricking you. It's, it's probably some kind of like meme thing. It's a meatloaf, but actually it's a cake! You know? Because I, I will not cook a meatloaf. Or maybe I'll have found a meatloaf recipe that I like. Maybe it's just my mother's meatloaf that I can't stand the smell of. Wouldn't surprise me. It's, it's actually like entirely true. I, I could definitely enjoy a meatloaf that was uh, cooked differently. You know, like uh, I think that it's the ketchup that they add into it, and uh, the ketchup being baked and then like being warmed up and heated up, and then that like super just aromatic ketchupy nastiness is gross to me. I think I think that's what it is. I never, I don't, I don't, you know, <laughs> I'm not up there, you know, sniffing meatloafs trying to discover what exactly it is about it that I don't like, because I would rather just not do that ever but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the ketchup just thinking logically about the ingredients of a meatloaf I'm pretty sure it's the ketchup because I don't like ketchup I equally cannot stand ketchup um, so it's yeah I don't know but I, I could I could maybe make a, a meatloaf that has a homemade ketchup in it that I do like maybe make a meatloaf that just doesn't have any ketchup in it at all so I like I like meatballs you know and a meatloaf is what, what's what's a meatloaf if not just a big meatball right so I could I could make a meatloaf that I enjoy but uh, my mother doesn't seem to be able to she makes meatloaf that she enjoys I can just make something else the next day after the smell's gone <laughs> I don't cook for anybody else either I mean I do sometimes I make stuff for other people but 
If you're like, yeah, could you add this or this to it? I'm like, nah, this this is what I, you make it or you make your, you, you eat this or you make your own thing. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not cooking for other people either. I don't mind making an extra. You know, if I'm frying up an egg or something, then I'll fry up an egg. But if I'm salting and pepper in it, there's going to be salt and pepper on your egg too. And if I'm frying it in bacon fat, there's going to be bacon fat in yours. I'm not washing the pan and putting in sunflower oil or no oil or butter or whatever. Like, you're getting what I'm getting or you're making your own. Unless I'm making like a date night dinner or something. You know, then in that case, I'll make like a nice thing that might be enjoyed. But if I'm like cooking for myself for dinner, heck no, nah, man. I'll make my own thing. Anyway. That's going to do it for today. Thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you like it. Subscribe to see more in the future. Comment if you have anything to say. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.